Hey guys, Kelly Nealon here for Click On This. We are here at the Pally Center for Media in New York City. We just had a chance to talk to the cast and crew of Unreal. If you have not checked out this show yet, it's on Hulu, watch it. You're gonna binge watch it, it is awesome. But we got to talk to them about what it's really like on set and how important it is to expose some of the realities of reality TV. Check it out. So you guys just won a Peabody. I know, I, I'm, I, I still can't quite believe it, honestly. It's, I, I really, it was nothing that we ever knew that we were eligible for, let alone would could and win. So are you super excited? Like, you, Were you a fan of the show when it was out originally? I, I didn't know about the show until I started doing the okay. show. And um, before I got the role, I wanted to do my homework. And of course, I wanted to just maybe watch one or two episodes. Yeah. Like we were talking, binge watched. Like the complete episode, like it was ridiculous how great the show is. And so when I found out to be playing the suitor, I was head over heels. So um, yeah, I love I, I love the show. It's amazing. What do you like about this show? Like there, are, I mean, it's it's funny, but it's so dramatic as well. What I mean, what's not to like about the show? I mean, it, it rips the covers off reality TV, and, and I've never really been a big fan of just reality TV. But now that I go back and I look at, it, I'm like, oh my god, it's so pro. And, I, and I now look at it, and I'm like. Oh my God, there's no such thing as reality TV. Are you so excited for season two? I can't even tell you how excited I am to season for season two. I'm well, excited. please do tell me. I'm mostly excited for you all to see season two. We're still in the midst of shooting right now. We're on episode eight up in Vancouver. This season is bigger, badder, darker, and Funnier than How is that even one? I mean, the writers have just found. Well, the first season, uh, we were we were so busy trying to get to know all of these characters. This season, we we know them all so well. The five of us, the producers behind the scenes, we really just get, we get to dive straight into their world. Um, six months from where we left off, and uh, we get to see. Uh, 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 how much has occurred in that six months? A lot of change has happened. You know, some people have progressed. Some people have uh, have definitely regressed. Um, some people have stayed the same. But uh, all of our stories this season are just so well thought out and um, very truthful. What do you like about this show? Like, there, are, I mean, it's it's funny, but it's so dramatic as well. What, I mean, what's not to like about the show? I mean, it, it rips the covers off reality TV, and, and I've never really been a big fan of just reality TV, but now that I go back and I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, it's so pro. And, I, and I now I look at it, and I'm like, oh my God, there's no such thing as reality TV. It is really interesting to see, you know, I think we have this perception of this, these reality shows that everyone on it is a hot mess, right? Yeah. And, and then we go and you guys are showing maybe the people behind it, not necessarily everyone, but maybe the people behind it have some things going on as well that contribute. Well, I mean, the, the thing that they have going on is that they're, they're willing to manipulate people. Uh, I mean, I know that, you know, it's a sensationalized version of something, that, but not so much. I mean, the stories that, that Sarah has told, Sarah Gertrude Shapiro, who created the show, the stories that she told, I mean, it's, it's no secret that these things are manipulated and you're not actually watching reality. But, um, but they are kind of cooked up a little bit and they also are real people. These are real people who have to go back to their real lives. And don't, they sort of don't know what they're investing in. Fame is funny in a, very, in a way that it's, it's not funny at all. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's life changing. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, somebody who was very famous said, uh, was telling me that, that what it was like to be famous was it's really fun until you realize you don't get to turn it off. And, and they're going back to that life sometimes, you know, the ones who get close to the, to the end. Or, and it's, it's, it's a weird deal they make. I mean, look, it's just like in, in politics, you know, nothing is as it seems. And I think that in, in a, a context like reality television where they're trying to say that everything they do is real, 
that's where we're like, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure we can tell you that it's not that real. And so why not? Why not shine a light into dark corners? I mean, that's kind of what we want to do, and that's what we're hoping we'll do. But we're not trying to steer people away from reality television. It's just a little bit of an eye-opening experience. You guys are starting to learn the pluses and minuses of each of your characters, yes. positive and negative. Yes. What are some of Jay's? Jay is the moral compass of the show this season. Jay um, has reached his line in the sand and he is no longer willing to cross it, especially this season when it comes to racial politics and racial dynamics in the world of reality television. Not only is he wanting to protect his contestants and the suitor, played by BJ Britt, um, he, he wants to progress. He uh, lives under this glass ceiling in the world of Everlasting because all of his contestants get kicked off in the past 14 seasons. This year, he finally has the opportunity to take it to the win. And he's, he's doing everything and anything necessary to get there while still holding on to his soul. Tell me a little bit about, about your role. Well, Chet's got a lot of problems. He's got uh, 11,000 problems. We're just only scratching the surface. But he's kind of an emotional uh, infant. But, uh, like the rest of the characters in the show, he's a terrific salesman. He's got a lot of, uh, I, I think of him like, a, he's, the girls work with, uh, with scalpels, and they're sitting on the front of a tank, and he's the tank. And he just is this force of nature, but, you know, he doesn't work with a scalpel. He thinks he does. And, and, and every once in a while, the, the, the tank rolls down the hill and explodes. <laughs> <laughs> every, every once in a while, a yeah, lot more than yeah, that. Yeah, 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 it so, does. Now, there are a lot of female, strong, strong characters on the show. Of course. Do you have any females in your life who have kind of prepped you for this role to deal with all of that on the set? Oh, my gosh. No, you know what? I wish my mother was would have been there to hold my hand throughout the whole process. Because, <laughs> I mean, even with me like and, and my character, it's like the things that they put him through, that, because he's just a pawn, you know, when he comes on to Everlasting between Chet and Rachel and Quinn, and he comes on the show thinking that he's going to just, you know, come on the show, rehabilitate his image and everything like that, and come to find out he, he just walks into an all-out all brawl between these, between these three. 